this dude sideways going through doors that are maybe three feet wider than the car. So I went to this race and I didn't win, but I was the main competitor. Like I was the first in time trials the first day. I had the number one, like the yellow jersey if you're in Tour de France. And I went into the, the race the next day and me and this other dude that ended up winning were like head to head about half a lap of he ahead of everybody else. And then the last turn, I took the last corner a little too low and clipped a propeller and tumbled to the finish line and landed upside down right before the finish line and couldn't finish. So I did DNF'd basically and that booted me out. So I didn't end up winning or anything. I came in second in freestyle, but the racing thing really just, it wasn't my style. There's a lot of stress involved. There's a lot of luck involved because of the analog video that you're using. So anyways, drone racing wasn't my style. I preferred just flying these things in a freestyle manner. People take these drones, they're really fast and they strap cameras to them and they chase stuff. And there are ESPN related drone racing series where it's called Drone Racing League. That's probably the most notorious one where they're racing these things around inside abandoned buildings. But there's still a more like artistic aerial photography version and that's kind of what I'm doing with it. It's just a carbon fiber frame. You have this lithium polymer battery on here that puts power into this printed circuit board inside the drone that feeds out power to the speed controller to power these three phase electric motors and they speed up and slow down to adjust how the drone maneuvers. And there's a flight controller, which is essentially the brain of the operation. And that's just like any aircraft. There's the RC part where you're flying it around, and then there's the video part, which actually is what makes this extremely fun. We took security cameras from like old school security systems, like that you would find in your like warehouses or whatever. You take the cameras from those and then you take an analog video transmitter, very similar to like what you would use in a TV where you have the big Yagi antenna, that antenna that you know looks like a Christmas tree on its side on your roof, essentially. And you transmit video back to a receiver that's in a set of goggles. So in essence, I'm seeing exactly what this drone is seeing in real time in a set of goggles with little LCD screens in there. So it's as if I were sitting in the drone in first person flying it around. Now there's a camera on top of here, obviously there's a GoPro, and then there's the camera that I'm seeing through. So it's not actually HD image that you're seeing when you're flying these things. It's like uh, an analog video, it kind of looks like a tube TV that you know you go behind a tree or something and it starts to break up because the signal's not as good. So it's not the best quality image in the world, but it's very usable and flyable. Since they're all manual, there's no GPS, there's no autonomous action, like this thing doesn't hover on its own, it's all flown manually. So when I tilt it over, if I don't correct the tilt, it'll just fall into the ground and crash and explode. I have kind of innovated in a way of taking this video platform and incorporating it into action sports. I did a shoot with BMW on their new Oneer commercial, which is a hatchback one series. And that was in Mexico City. I was approached by BMW consultants and they were like, hey, do you wanna come do a commercial with us? It's gonna be based on drone racing our new Oneer. Um, and it could be in one of these three locations, South Africa, Mexico City, or Canada or something. And I was like, sure, whatever. And they, they asked me my day rate. And I said, okay, here. I have all the certifications and insurance that I need to fly these things professionally and they, they knew that based on my YouTube channel. They just found me on YouTube and were like, hey, uh, this guy, let's get him. So they called me, I said, all right, let's do it. A couple months later, I flew to Mexico City, got off the plane with my drones, went through customs, showed up at this random hotel and there's just all these German people running around and all these Mexican people running around with cameras and gear and all this stuff. And they have this car that's like super secret because it's not out yet, obviously. It was actually a really cool car. I'm, I don't know, personally, not a huge BMW fan. I would never own one, but they're awesome in my book for other people to own because I just don't have the money to maintain it. That's really my, I, I don't know, I'm sure I'm going to get hate for not liking BMWs, but I personally wouldn't own one. And we set up a racetrack all over the city. This was kind of a staged event where there was a professional driver and I was supposed to be sitting in the passenger seat of the car, flying my drone, racing the guy driving. So I was in the car feeling the G-forces of the car and the drone was chasing the car and we were supposed to be like, you know, doing this the whole time, like neck and neck, 
racing essentially. And at the end of the day, uh, we went to all different locations. We went to some abandoned buildings. We actually shut down a street in the middle of Mexico City at, at night. What it came out to be was I couldn't actually sit in the car because the guy driving it was way too good of a driver. <laughs> And he would be like sideways doing 20 miles an hour, which I don't know how you do. And they had like this BMW guy there that's programming all this crap, like making the car do certain things. And I don't know if I'm going to get in trouble for saying that, but there was a dude there like, eh, let's make it rear wheel drive. So, you know, it's an all wheel drive car. They were programming it so that it would be able to do some of this stuff. And the guy that is driving it, he does like donuts in a Huracans with his wife. I, I, he's a Swiss, I think he's Swiss or something. I can't remember his name. Holy crap, phenomenal driver, one of the best I've ever seen. And chasing him was, uh, I don't know, it was super fun. Being able to find someone that is predictably good and not going to crash in a tight environment, especially flying through like warehouses and whatnot. This dude's sideways going through doors that are maybe three feet wider than the car, and he's sideways through it, and I'm freaking flying behind him chasing uh, and getting all these gnarly shots. It was just a, a crazy experience to be able to take something that, you know, I originally just started doing because I thought it was fun. I knew I, that there was some way to make money at flying drones, but I didn't think this type of drone would be the ones that I would make money with. I thought it would be like, you know, the big aerial photography drones. And then eventually incorporating that into something that I had a love for, which was vehicles, cars. It's just crazy to be able to think that, you know, 10 years ago, when I was 18, I was you know, getting out of high school, driving my 240 around, having fun, and now I get to chase on big production shoots for uh, large vehicle manufacturers and make commercials with them.